welcome to another episode after action report of basil and the stew here's one i pulled from the archives this game is probably four or five years old but it is a very good i would probably consider a eh, pseudo introductory scenario to the pto and aso rules it wasn't from the rising sun when i first played it we played it before, I think it was, a, maybe it was, um, 158. Maybe it was from Rising Sun, I don't recall. It was a couple of years ago. Rising Sun's been out for a while. Anyway, Last of the Strength. Um, engagement between the Americans attacking the Japanese in a hut village. And um, lots of little itty-bitty scenario special rules. I think they add a lot of flavor to the game. When you read the introductory portion of the scenario, I don't have it with me. Please pull it out, read it. Essentially, what it does, I go over it on the in the pregame, so I won't regurgitate that information to two spots. So I go over that information there. Lots of fun pregame, interesting information that sets up the scenario and puts you in the mood for a good, rainy, wet, nasty PTO scenario. Lots of units, not a lot of bling, just a lot of nitty gritty fighting. So I hope you enjoy this scenario. It's just an after-action report that I did a long time ago. My opponent, I didn't remember what his name was but until I saw his dice rolls. I didn't think Basil would pop up the dice rolls because this was before Basil had the dice rolls on the screen. But John Lehman, thank you for the game. And uh, I appreciate your competition. I think this was in a Basil tournament many, many years ago. But anyway, I saved the log. I always wanted to get around to it because I don't have a lot of PTO. There's not a lot of PTO replays out there. Uh, I love to get one with tanks going just to see them blow up and just drive around. Anyway, enjoy. Leave comments. Uh, there will be things that we've done wrong here. Please point those things out so other players can learn of what, oh, Stu, you screwed that task check. You screwed this one up. Just point them out. I don't have a problem with that. We're here to learn. PTO is tough enough as it is, keeping all this little wonky stuff going on, and you'll see some of that wonky stuff in the game. And um, just point it out point out nicely we'll learn from it you guys can answer each other's questions and we'll all have fun at this so let's go americans let's go kick their ass all right thanks for joining us for another fight it has been a while since i have played this scenario asl 158 last of their strength shark paint burma 21st of may 44 the victory conditions the americans win at game end if controlling more hut hexes on board 38 than the Japanese, which is the center board. Let me get rid of these idiots off your screen. There's a lot of HUD hexes to be had here. So there's four, six, seven, 13 HUD hexes. We need six of them to win. Lots of odd little rules in this one, other than just simply being PTO, but we will go over those. And uh, hopefully I'll remember them. There are many times, I believe there are a lot of times during the game where we may have missed a couple of these special rules. It's easy to lose track of. I think in a game like this, you kind of have to look at the special rules like in the rally phase of the next turn just to refresh yourself on them when they're kind of secondary. So um, that's what I would suggest to you, especially if you have them written on the side right here, right above me. Um, but I need seven of those hexes. The Americans start on board 37, as you see there. Let me zoom in a little bit. They start here on board 37. They have some movement restrictions. Let's see. We have we have three, six, nine, ten squads, one of which I have broken down into half squads to, of course, search and or just running run into stacks. Uh, again, the Japanese have a tendency to have lots of hip and have a tendency to kick your ass when you go into that hip. So... That's a dangerous tool. Uh, I think these are actual wheat fields. These are wheat fields in season. Uh, I do not think they are plowed fields as it was. It seems to be depicted here. I may be mistaken. June through October. Uh, it's May. Uh, I don't think these are plowed fields. Um, so we're not playing this plowed fields. Let me just put it that way. So let me back up just an itch here. Let me zoom into the warranted and copyrighted 120 percent it is seven turns long not that bad it's actually lots of fighting for seven turns because you only have to essentially go about 10 hexes 
in seven turns that's assault advance assault advance assault advance you like pass the next board already so that's easy uh there's mud mud's fun we, we got a little bit i got no notes on the right hand side of the mud rain possible and uh because the shots are going to be probably six x's or less it won't come into effect that much but you never know uh they are gusty so smoke is garbage and i think the overcast which means rain does not end if it rains it begins it doesn't end mud and a light jungle we do not have dense jungle dense jungle will make this scenario suck real bad because you won't be able to see a lot you'd have to get up nice and dirty all right scenario special rules for mostly the americans the americans may not double time which means i think the theme of this scenario was they were kind of exhausted uh, you can look at I don't even know where the heck the scenario came from. Uh, it's, again, many, many years old. Uh, assault move, uh, but no double time. Or Americans may not double time. They can assault move. The close combat, Americans are CX for all purposes. So Americans really don't want to jump into close combat with the Japanese, especially if the Japanese are the attackers, because they'll have the minus one for being Japanese, get the hand-to-hand, -hand, and be considered CX so you're going to get your ass kicked. You don't want to do that. Your Americans, again, I think are considered to be like an exhausted condition. Obviously, the CX. Mud is plus one HE in open ground, which is essentially only going to matter for the mortar. And if the Japanese remain in the huts in the uh, kunai, rather, the kunai, it's not wheat fields, it's kunai, uh, Stuff like that, it, it won't make a difference. So I don't really think I catch it in the open with a mortar. All right, the first action of the American rally phase, which is this is the this is the interesting part of the scenario, which makes it really cool. Um, the ten minus two you have in your entourage here. I've got Stuart, I've got Santos, and I have Kiff. The ten minus two. Hmm. The 10 minus 2 uh, must take a one task check. Failure of that task check means he is TI, which represents that the 10 minus 2 leader like had a fever and was sick and the whole nine yards. And um, so if he fails the one task check, which means he rolls a 10, 11, or 12, he is just TI for the for that turn. Um, which means which means he may not partake in any actions which is rally recover all that good stuff direct units nothing so he's done he's a he's like spewing his guts so very cool uh scenario special rule uh the pacific theater is always cool to play in and um the last scenario special rule i believe is uh the rain is greater than or equal to 10 and if it's heavy it's plus one for six x anyway it's hindrances, just hindrances for the rain. I don't really think it came into effect. Either that or we ignored the holes. I have no clue. We have snipers on board, uh, ELR-4, Sniper 4, which is pretty damn good. Uh, the Americans, the ELR-2. Again, I think this represents their weakened conditions from on ongoing fighting and the last of their strength. So take that. Uh, Japanese have an entourage. That sets up here. Uh, I think there's one, two, three. I think there's probably like six or seven squads. Of course, you can, of course, you can always hide them. And they have to set up within like four hexes. I think four hexes of this focal point right here. You can see like the little F right there. Um, I'll zoom in just a bit. And on turn three, he gets a ton of reinforcements coming on here. Do you see that? Enter R5 on turn three. So he has a lot of reinforcements coming on here. And I've got a plan for these guys. We'll get to that later. Lots of uh, palm trees. So they're going to get their asses up there quick. And they're going to come on the back side of these jungles. And maybe uh, kick the Americans' ass out of the huts. That's what we're looking for here. So most of the combat is going to be in the first five turns. Or turn three. Wait, wait, they turn three? Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, 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 turn three. Turn three they came on. So they'll probably be in combat range for a number of turns. Let me move my body over here. Americans may not double time. It says down here, bottom left over there. No double time. CX in close combat. Time minus CA. Okay, we're good. So we kind of doubled up on the notes. Very important to put the notes. Uh, either make notes if you're playing face to face. Just jot it down like on a, you know, slot of paper. 
it does two things. One, you can put a sticky note right next to the board because a scenario card is usually kind of inundated with counters. And two, it also, uh, you write it down, you remember a little bit better. Oh, okay, I remember the one task check. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no double time. Yeah, 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 whatever. So it helps you remember that if you're playing face-to-face. -face. Same sort of thing here. I make bullet points. The bullet points pop out much better than just the stupid text and labels and scrap like that. The bullet points, you go, oh, boom. You know, your eyes go right to it. So with that in mind, Americans only have one medium, one mortar. And I think the Japanese pretty much have about the same thing. They might have a couple lights and like, of course, they're like their knee mortar or some crap like that. So we will proceed with turn one and let's get the action going. That's the pre prelim of the game. Just a down dirty fight. You got to find out where these guys are. And you gotta you gotta make some moves. So hopefully I won't have so he places the sniper there. We reduce it. I place mine over here. Of course, you gotta play snipers within six hexes of six or more units. Um that's easy for, for him because I've only got five different hexes. And for me, I put on the right side. Why do we put on the right side, Stu? One, my 10 minus two needs to kick ass. Two, my 10 minus two might be out for a, a bit. So if he gets out. If, he, if Kiff fails his task check for a turn, they might jump on him because he's TI. That means they could jump him, no minus two direction, and they just bonsai on him or whatever. So hopefully if I get like a, if he rolls like a three on a morale check when he's bonsaiing against me, maybe I could sniper one of his leaders or something like that or pin. Well, a pin's not going to help for a bonsai, but you know what I mean. I'm essentially putting him there, even though it's low, to defend Kiff as he's the weakest link, um, as he's the, is the crux to the scenario, the minus two needs to be kicking. Santos in the middle, pretty badass. Nine minus one, strong leader. I love nine minus one leaders. They make lots of morale checks. They're up and they're fighting most of the time. Eight zero Stewart. <sighs> Hell, he just got out of college. Come on, what do you expect? Come on. All right, all right, so we're advancing. So we're popping this down here. Let me see what's going on. Uh, there's my task check. First rally turn, I roll a nine. That equals a task check. I barely pass it. I have no clue what the other die roll. Maybe the other die roll was a task check to deploy. Failed that, of course. For whatever reason, I can't deploy with a mush. Sh sh Did I have my seven should have went? Seven should have deployed. So again, mortar, five portage points. Leader may help him carry the mortar. So he's going a little bit forward with that. So I don't care. Stu, what the hell are you doing moving a damn stack? You're an imbecile. Well, look at this force. They're all split up. The best shot I'm going to take, let's say the best shot's here, right? Let's see he's got 447 and 226. Two, What's that firepower? What's that shot? I'm in light jungle. There's a hindrance, and there's a hindrance of the hut. So it's going to be a, wow, 4 plus 2? I, don't, I really don't care. I really don't care. I'm moving this guy up here to punch him in the face, and I'm using my leadership. Which he better damn well pass any stupid little morale check that he's going to pop. Um, and he's got a minus one modifier to assist all of those units in doing so. Unfortunately, we've got a 347 here. Two firepower. Remember, two even shots have a tendency to kick your ass. So that's a two even shot. I don't think the rain has... Maybe the, ta maybe the other dice roll was the rain. That's probably what it was. So there's no rain, yeah. So it's going to be a two even shot. And let's see what happens. Uh, of course... If I click off the board, it does that. So let's go boom. So, uh, oh, I think his rolls are on the left-hand side. And uh, one guy residual. I think he just stays behind. And that guy runs into there. One residual, even. He rolls low. I don't know what it is because this is, remember, an old file. He breaks. Doesn't matter what he rolls. And uh, he's subsequent. For, uh, he should have subsequent for Spiral. Ah, 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 right here. No marker on him. There's the there's the two. There's the four shot. This should have a marker on it. There's the other guy right there. So he fired on there as well. That's just palm trees. No TEM on that. So that is a four uh, four even shot on that. Actually four minus one, right? Non assault movement. And uh, so it's two, three, four. That's all the further that he could. Uh, I think he moved five. Yeah. He ain't going adjacent. Ain't no way hell I'm going to open ground. Anyway, I'm getting my mortar in a central position. From right there, my mortar can pound every single position on the map. A little bit of hindrances here and there, but three hex range. Actually, this guy's a little close. I don't really don't care about him. My squad's going to take care of him. 
He's gonna pound everybody else. Anybody moves, you're gonna blop. I'm gonna blop mortar shots on him. Three, four, sevens to move up. Santos, ass kicker that he is, takes takes the takes the lead, takes the shots, does his job, gets paid well. All right, next dudes. Stewart cowering in the back. Two. Ah, here we goes. There we go. There's the mortar and three, four, seven. He's gonna mortar me while I'm in the jungle to get the explosion. So unfortunately, uh, let's see. He misses, and that's those things are great because they have a range of one to sixteen. At a range of one, they only have a rate of fire of one, but they're really good. Uh, final fires that. Uh, so residual there. I move up. Kiff on the right hand side uh, moves up. I think that should be a decent shot. That should be a decent shot. And my other squad skirts over here. No, no nobody. Just just Kiff moves up. Stack, remember, stack, I don't care. These guys are going to be firing a lot through that. And Kiff and his minus two badass modifier. If he fails a morale check, that's just the way it is, baby. That's all there is to it. 10 minus two's got to earn his pay. I'm not going to slink him up here one squad at a time. Right here, he doesn't have a giant stack. Minus three liters, HMGs, rat a tat tat. Nothing's happening. They're just single squads, three, four, sevens, four, four, sevens. If he breaks to that, then, you know, so be it. So be it. But I'm going to be firing at 12 firepower right in this face. Minus two. Fire. Fire and forget, baby. So a couple of those guys break up there. I advance. Advance face here. Uh, and I'm terrible. I keep a track of the little dial over here in, in the upper corner over there. Um, so don't pay attention to that. Hey, we'll move this. Uh, don't pay attention to that. Uh, I'm very bad at that. I like my little um, my little doohickeys that I show pop up the screen. So anyway, uh, I take a little uh, a little nudge here. Some of these guys advance up in a big stack. Now that might be that might be an error. But um, again, we have a hindrance. We have a hindrance right there in the middle, right over there in the middle, and um, not a problem from that shot over there. So in case he fires there, let's say he's a full squad, four plus one. Um, he could get a lucky shot on that. I have to admit, gotta admit that. But Santos is right in front of him. Uh, if he fires, he'll die. He'll just get reduced. And so that's that's the ticket there. So putting the pressure on now, trying to keep guys together, keeping it going. Let's keep it going, baby. Okay, Stu does advance up. We got advanced up, making a giant fire lane. So in case anybody else becomes unconcealed, and remember, he probably has hidden it somewhere else within that setup zone probably if it's within four hexes of, of the f that's right in the middle right over there um and it is an overlay so that's why you don't see a hex grid on some of that so bear with us on that one so everyone's advancing up santos advances up uh, i think oh yeah yeah, yeah squad i think he's gonna go back and try and rally to be honest oh uh, maybe not okay kiff on the right hand side jumps on the sniper tells the sniper you better do your job there we go. Here's a there's an eight, which is really odd. I gotta admit, um, I replaced the markers on the left hand side, and uh, this is an old file, so I don't know what the Vals of Gods have done, but normally when you have an old file and they have dice, they um, it doesn't like like translate. It has like an error, so they're showing up on the screen. That never existed back in the day when I played this game. Uh, oh okay. He, the, for some reason we're circling the he got a fire in hand to hit. Boom boom boom. No fact, and again, that's that's where the red that's where the red circle of bullshit goes on. It bounces the map around, and it's just kind of irritating. Shots come down, rain down on him. They blast, they blast. It's uh, that's the four four seven that blasted him. And so maybe not. Uh, no, no. He hasn't shot yet. This is gone. The three four seven blasted him. Got a lucky shot. So yeah, it's, we got to roll the punches. Now the two four seven pops. Santos's squad breaks. Santos does not, does not break. The other guys are just moving a little bit. Let me move it down. Because no more action occurs at the top. I fire a four on somebody. It K's the unit. K's the LMG right there. It K's him. And then he's got to take some morale checks. And then he also fails the morale check. And now is a broken 137. So that LMG full squad <laughs> is gone. That's what we pay Kiff for. Ripped him down, ripped him down. A couple couple bad rolls there. And he is first fired. 
There we go. Those guys will come up a little bit later, just so you can see the depth of those particular units. Route phase comes and goes. I route back there. Santos routes back with his broken unit. Uh, now we got a couple broken units in that hex. Santos is going to earn his pay this round. We've got a mortar with a minus two acquisition on us. He actually moves, and so therefore he should have lost his acquisition, which he does. Very good. At least we didn't screw that up. Stu rolls his task check, or Kiff rolls his task check. Rolls a five, no problem. That's the rain die roll, dice roll. Uh, do some rallies. I pop those bad boys up. Most of them rally. I'm happy about that. They're up and ready to go. And uh, okay, America turn two. So prep fire. We're just gonna rip these guys down. We immediately uh, roll seven. There was eleven morale check, and he fails the alert, and he is step reduced. Stuart on the other side. He's got three squads chasing after this one three seven. We shouldn't have any problem in jumping this guy. We don't really want to, again, we don't really want to jump him in close combat because of hand to hand. Especially if it's ambush terrain. If he's in open ground, that's fine. Uh, ambush terrain, even at one to six, he probably needs a five or a six to kill us. So uh remember, first line. Or he's second line, so he probably uh let's see, what does he need in hand to hand combat? And this is what you have to take into consideration. Uh, here's the hand to hand. One to six, he needs a four minus one CX, and he's not. If we ambush, it's minus two. See, he would need a six for a casual reduction, five for a straight up kill. I'm not willing to give him that. Not willing to. Will not willing to give him that. I will just step reduce him all day long till he has no firepower. Because guess what? Guess what? The American has plenty of firepower. You reduce them, your morale's the same. You'll destroy them. That other squad moves up. Let me move the map over just a little because it's a little bit too much my head covering it so oh god this damn red bouncing ball he first fires i think he's in the open uh yeah it's my mortar man he's in the open he rolls a nine luckily so and i go to recover roll that three pop that mortar mortars up and going we take the three four seven and we are going to search why are you searching here Stu? God, I told you not to search. Why? Because now we're getting in the hip zone. This is the hipster zone. I need to search to see if there's guys in that hut. I'm willing to sacrifice a 347A to lose this concealment here because he has yet to move. Actually, the road doesn't do a damn thing. But um, I'm willing to take the casualties. I need to find the hipsters. I don't want to roll them up to him in, in advance phase, and that's what the idea is. So, um... We are just TIing. Is that a good move? In this situation, probably not. Because there's only two there's only two huts available. Maybe maybe this position here is better because there'll be one, two, three, four locations available. Or even right here, there might be one, two, three, four. You know what I'm saying? Or right here right in the middle, where there's four locations that you will reveal, hopefully reveal by my bad, bad dice rolls, die rolls. Uh, I'll probably get one. Then, you know, that's the ticket. So um, is that the best searching location? I will say no. No, it's not. But that's what I did. And we're going to go for it. One hex I can't search. Let's see if I did that right. So I guess he was dummies. Got rid of him. Now, now guess what? Guess what? Our 667 gets to run up there because that LMG has gone. We popped him. Kiff popped his ass. The first fired unit's already first fired. He could subsequent first fire at nothing, nothing minus one. So he essentially is final fired because he has half firepower to a range of three. So we can ignore him. This guy, his guy is final fired. These guys are free to move in that location. These other guys can fire. He can fire long range. He can fire long range. Ain't going to do it because Kiff's right there. He's going to he's gonna whack him if he, if he does fire. So moving the 667 up. Bolstering the left-hand side, and then we're going to do a sweep. Kiff's buddies goes up. Uh, he rolls a six. Good roll. Good roll. John, 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 John. I think uh, this is John. Maybe John Lehman. A number of years back. John Lehman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for playing this game, John. Uh, appreciate the game. Uh, I think it was a lot of fun. I think we both enjoyed it, so regardless of the outcome. Um, morale check. I made morale check. Got lucky there. He did, he did have a good shot, so... 
Uh, IFT, I fire back at him somewhere. Oh, the, uh, the mortar. The mortar fires a hit on the unit because the mortar did not move, but yet I moved to the mortar and recovered it. Uh, whether or not I could fire it, I think I could fire that because the mortar had not moved, sort of like machine guns. Again, another five on the infantry fire table, decent roll. Morale check, he's good, five. But I think because I rolled a one, and this is the hut rule. Where's the where's the hut rule? Let's check that hut rule, baby. This is where this is where the this is where the PTO becomes fun. Where is the hut rule? Boom. Hut. Hut. Okay. Flame, 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 flame. Aerial setup collapse. No collapse. Fire. Nope. 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 Here we go. Uh, small arms. Maltov, MG, IFE, small arms, which means infantry fire, can thusly create a flame even if part of a fire group. However, if using only small arms Maltov, greater than or equal to one unit in the fire group would still have to qualify for point blank fire. He qualifies for point blank fire because he's right next to him. If one HUD is set aflame by the same attack, that is... Oh, there it is. I skipped the rule. Go up a little bit. Any small arms, point blank, triple point blank fire, Maltov, MG, IFE, DC, HE versus, I'm like rapping, versus any hut location causes a flame in that hut if the original color die roll of its effect is a one. What did I roll? Uh, I rolled a five with a one. So therefore, it should cause a flame, not a blaze. I think we put a blaze on there and we flip it. So if I fire into a hex with a hut at point blank or triple point blank fire i don't have well the mg is there so everything's got to be point blank fire no 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 small arms small arms point blank triple point blank fire mg's get fired at any range so um so there's that so hopefully yes we put a flame there excellent so which is really cool let me clear this and somebody roll a 12 for morale check something like that did you see that? Somebody roll a 12. Uh, somebody somebody ate it. So we're advanced firing over here. He breaks with my five. Let me reduce this. He breaks with my five. Okay. So, and then the other guy fired again. I think he fails another morale check, which just outright eliminates him. So we got a mortar sitting in the open. No problem. One less guy to worry about. Advanced fire phase is over. We go route. We go advance. Again, we're flanking that side of the village. Now we've got those three huts available to us. Uh, we do know that the two huts next to the TI unit are clear. So those are clear to enter. The other ones are not so clear. Mortar moves up, loses his acquisition. I think we lose his acquisition. Anyway, that guy chooses not to route. Um, who's in close combat? Ah, oh, down here. Who's in close? Oh, right here. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Right here. This guy's in close combat. So uh, I roll a six, of course. Usually I roll a five, but this turn I roll a six. He rolls a four. No ambush, but I do get to kill him in close combat. Um, I was three to one. I roll a seven. Casual reduces. Uh, I don't know. But they, probably not. Uh, three to one is an eight. Eight for casual reduction. So John starts his turn. Tries to rally. Unit does not rally. So right now, right now, he has got nothing in the town. He's got no one and nothing in the village. It is turn two, and I pretty much have the village. He has one, two, possibly three units. He's broken. He's going to be DM'd and destroyed. Again, this guy's TI from last turn. That should be removed. We have the flame here. Might go to blaze. We might be in trouble. And so he probably has hidden you somewhere in there. But we have a we have lost no one. We have lost no one. We have a broken unit, and that's it. So uh he moves over there i fire at him he makes it uh he does get a morale check of three which activates my sniper which does activate and it moves to that particular location and removes the dummies which is excellent because now kiff can eh, not necessarily freely move there but he can move a little bit more around so now right here i'm determining i'm determining i'm blind shooting the mortar i'm blind shooting that mortar let me reduce myself 
I'm blind shooting the mortar into where I think he might have a hidden guy. Again, I've searched here and here. I haven't searched down this row. So I think, well, let's, plast let's plaster some of these guys. That's where the little circles are. You saw the circles popping up. So I think the location I choose, I was going to choose this one. So, you know, I'm going to fire there. It's like, you know, if he was there, I think he would have point blank fired on my guys right there. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. What, would you do that? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm thinking that he would be a point blank fire or get the hell out of dodge sort of thing. So I fire and uh, I say, you know, I'm not going to fire here which I normally would. I said, you know, I'm going to fire there because I have to occupy those buildings. And if I occupy those buildings, where would be a good spot to be when the Americans are occupying the buildings? Well, you right there in the kunai. The kunai would be perfect because I'm going to move there, right? So popping. So you have a point blank shot and you're kind of like on the bottom side of the village. And so if you do get popped, you could just run, run back and wait to your reinforcements to come on on turn three which is next turn. So you have one more American movement phase. So let's continue. So I do decide to fire in the kunai right there. And I miss. Uh, and then the infantry, I fire my infantry fire table. So I miss the mortar, big deal. I think I, I, I might fire a group of number of guys. They do cower and guess what? He rolls a task check. It looks like a task check. The leader looks like he's pinned. And uh, a six, he does get a sniper activation. So he had a half squad and he's a leader there. So I honestly, from the mem my memory, I thought the mortar popped him. I think I thought the mortar critted his ass. But I got a lucky shot with my my squads. Got a pintas check on him. So I'm happy. He reveals his 9-0 leader and a 237. Now I don't get caught with my pants down. So now he has to now Hagami. And final fire. Uh so we fire point blank, eight, gets a broad check, breaks, doesn't die. Leaders, Japanese leaders, when they break, they do not die, they CR, so they just flip. So they are gone very fast. You fail a with a leader, he's wounded. You roll a die for death, which he rolls here a two, he doesn't die. He becomes an A plus one leader. So he pretty much lost Hit the element of surprise on that one there. And the morale check for... Uh, it must have been a morale check. And so uh, the unit was beneath him. The half squad beneath him breaks. So Agami is wounded. Half squad broken. Those guys final fire. IFT. Pa -pa -pow. Uh, his morale check doesn't generate a sniper for me. But he passes fine. I fire something to hit. Probably the mortar. Um, yep. Bad boy mortar right here. Boop, get a hit. Boop, another hit. Boop, another hit. Uh, a couple of infantry dice rolls, a couple of morale checks. Uh, bad stuff happens. He loses his half squad. Hagami survives. I fire 12 from somebody and I uh, keep firing. I just, everything just unloads in the village. Just everything unloads. So, uh, Flame to Blaze. The, the, I think the other, the 10 right you see right there is the Flame to Blaze. So that sucker ignites up. That's a crazy, crazy ass scenario. So therefore, that American unit, when that hut blazes up, you can't stay there or you die. So you have to. Luckily, it's my turn. I volunt. Uh, I think you can break. I can break, break, and then get the hell out. So um, unfortunately, my squad had to break. Uh, we could check that. Uh, burp, burp. Okay, fire for. Okay, when a flame in a non-collapse hut becomes a blaze, uh, oh, here's, I think we screwed the pooch here. Whenever a flame in a non-collapsed hut, which I think in this case is not collapsed, um, that hut immediately collapses. At that point, I think I had to roll a task check. I'm not sure if we did that, but um, when, uh, but it collapses, and a blazing hut is indicated by marking it with a reverse side of collapsed hut counter. I don't think we did that. Um AT or DC, the KIA will collapse it, and and um, vehicle entry they collapse it too, or when it becomes blazing. 
So there should be a collapse wall. Technically, you won't be able to enter the hex anyway because now it's blazing. So, But I think the problem with the collapsed hut is you need a task check to get on out. Get on down the road. Uh, collapsed PTC is taken after fully resolving all the effects of the attack. So I'm thinking the 7. Um, oh, I don't want that. I think in the 7 on the bottom there is my task check not to be uh, done in the in the collapse of that hut. So there's the other you see here is the flame to blaze. So it blazes up, then the hut collapses on my Americans, but my Americans pass that task check of seven. So he gets to, that he doesn't get become pinned and therefore he would have just been killed and eliminated. So I just immediately broke and I got the hell out because um, because it's, uh, it's his turn. So I have to break in the route phase, advance fire route, advance route yeah, yeah, yeah so if it were my turn i could advance out uh but it's his turn i have to break so i think we did that right check me on that read those rules quirky rules huts are quirky simple but quirky but they're kind of fun so he breaks gets out again pto baby only in the pto and see how this differs from uh, the sk pto it's a hell of a lot different so Hagami advances away, no problem. I can't track him because uh, I don't use the 3 8 inch counters for that crap. I use a half inch because nothing else has acquisition of a half inch in this game. So I simply use half inch. There's no point in using the full the full three quarters. Uh, task check for Kif, not problem. I think we go to rally some units. Uh, I don't think we have to rally anybody. He moves out there to draw fire. He gets blasted. Why I moved out here? I really don't know. Um, everything's going, maybe, you know, it's one of those situations where if everything's going so damn good, it's like you're invulnerable. You just throw guys, screw up, I'm just going to throw guys out there. I threw him out there and he got shot. Uh, you know, a four is, is pretty bad. So he gets he gets, he gets final fire because he doubled, double four. So that's, that's at least, yeah, hey, I got that. My mortar goes, DMs the other guy. Everyone else just assault moves, advances, kind of essentially just taking all the huts. You know, we're going for the control of the huts. And uh, oh, this guy must this guy must have rallied, but um, obviously the obviously he can't move up if he's broken. So again, Vassal files. Uh, okay. Oh, he must have fired on with somebody. Final protected fire. Uh, I think it's final protected fire. So yes, he does. He does break. Um. So the, he must have final protect fire with the 137. 1 minus 2, I'll take it too. I'm getting surrounded. You got to break as many units as possible. Now, what, Stu, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing with this guy here? Where's he going? The, the, the party's to the left. The, or the, the, to, oh, yeah, to our left. To his right, to our left. The party's to the left. What are you doing with that unit, Stu? Are you, are you, are you daft? Are you stupid? No. What's happening on turn three? What's happening on turn three? Do they look concealed to you? Is he going to bust ass across these palm trees to get to the village? Yeah, he's going to bust ass. So where do you think this unit's going to be at the end of the turn? He's most likely going to be right here. So he can see through the kunai. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this hex is out of LOS. Otherwise, we've got five hindrances. So he could see the entire way to here. You know, pretty much like through here. If he wants to move beyond here and get a little bit further past, that's fine. That's fine with me. You know, I have no problem with that. He'll be one further, one hex, one that one hex further away from the victory conditions. That's what we're trying to do. And if he's moving, then he loses concealment in my LOS, non assault movement. Again, if he wants to move behind the six hex uh, hindrances, he may do that, but it's going to be put him further away. So essentially, he just can't run straight up in here and come on the right side without losing concealment. He's not going to have any effect on this shot there because there's so many hindrances coming back at me. So I can ex expose him to fire, but he's pretty safe there. So that's why he's moving back there. Oh, yeah, I think my uh, MG mouth. Gee, imagine that. My machine gun's mouthing. Never saw that before. So defensive Sorry, I hit a pause there. Uh, so he's moving there. 
uh, medium's out of commission. This 137 is going to be eliminated. He is now encircled. Uh, I get attack check on him. Advance fire all these guys as much as possible. Just blast, 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 blast. Okay, broken units route. Mortar moves. Jump in close combat. Advance everyone up and getting ready for the Japanese to come on. We have two DM units here. Santos is in a squad. We've got a pinned 137. Another 6 to 1 odds. I will take the 6 to 1 odds. Uh, and he's encircled. So he's in a bad he's in a bad situation. So ambush ambush 5-5. Five, five, no big deal. 5 is 7 I get him. 7 he misses me. So he just gets eliminated. And that's the other ambush. There's a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, there's the other ambush over here. Uh, luckily, hey, the one time we get a 1. I get an 8. He gets a 3. He does casually reduce me. One leader. One leader does get me with a 3. So uh, I lost a half squad on that one. Not fun. His squads. Now his squads. Will be coming on. Okay, we're looking at what hexes I do not control. I'm marking the ones I have controlled and have occupied. That's what the bouncing... That one doesn't apply because it's not on board 38. So I do some rallies. We'll probably rally. Uh, probably go for a, a weapon repair there. I imagine that. Six on my medium. <laughs> Gone. Gone. Here he comes right here. Boom. One, two, three, four, five. And that's the six hex away, so it doesn't count. He loses his concealment. He's got a stack load of dudes here. I'm not sure what that concealment's for. But uh, I get to see what he is. So if he wants to regain concealment, he has to be out of LOS. Right there, I first fire. Um, six, six X range. Plus two hindrances. I got to take the shot. And boom. I snaked him. Morale check. Bad. Morale check. Fail. Mm, don't know what that was. Fail. And I think these morale checks are errors. Here's where we screwed the pooch. Um, you don't take... You don't take LLTC, LLMC with Japanese. I believe that does not occur. Because I think I remember that error before. Is that we don't take... Let me find it. Hold on. That is a Japanese nationality distinction. Leaders. Let's look it up. Leaders, unarmed, smoke, house squad, crews, SMCs. They have an odd rank, rank structure. Let me look it up. He does increase the other unit's morale by one. So theoretically, this unit here, even though he's a 7 plus 2, increases all the morale of those units by one. So therefore, they're all 8 morale units. Okay. And, um, yeah, Japanese leaders are pretty awesome. Japanese do not take pin task checks. I think we screwed that up later on. Um, I'm not sure about the leader loss morale check. Somehow, I think they are not subject to that. I'm not sure. I don't see it. Don't worry about it. And, uh, yeah, we're done with that. Okay. So, I think I remember screwing the pooch on this one. Because it's like, ah, you're taking a bunch of stuff. It just sounds, feels like an ETO or something like that. And so, right here, I, I write two morale check with a plus two leadership which I don't think is right. So all those units are not, I don't believe they are reduced. I really don't believe they are reduced. So I think we screwed up on that one. Again, moves his next unit. So then five, all he had to do is move back here and he would have kept those guys concealed. Uh, this is just an error with the file. All those guys are gone. All the guys are CXing. And this guy is just two squads. I first fire on that guy because I'm only shooting through three hindrances. I don't get a result. He, I think he late CXs. I get a couple, a sh couple other shots. Let me move up to the right. I do get a couple other shots that I have to take. You know, keep shooting. You got nothing else to lose. 
Uh, no, I have no clue why that went up there. I have no clue. Okay, that unit does not have LOS to an enemy, so he kind of, quote, routes forward. He advances and gains concealment. He regains concealment. Now, my task check, I roll a 10. Pow. Kip is immobilized the entire turn. I can't actually even get into position to just smite him when the game returns, when his movement phase comes up. I can't get a... Look at that shot from even from right there down to the seven plus two. That is a hindered shot, but yet it is still minus two. So I can't even move into the position to get a good shot. Remember, in Japanese terrain, this is bamboo. This is bamboo, which means it's inherent terrain. It will block line of sight, and it is a bear to move through. It's all your moon factors. So those essentially, for all intents and purposes, are just bad hexes to be in so kiff does a. Uh, i'm rolling some uh morale checks roll 12 my infantry fire table uh my unit here what's he doing he is entrenching even though the mud might increase it by one i roll a four he's got nothing else to do and i'm going to entrench him in the middle of the town and that way he'll he's safe and he could fire at pretty much all the spots that he could defend here's three here here's three here uh there's three here and then over here these guys are line of sight because huts do not block line of sight he could pound the game when he's moving up through these areas here so i'm going to instead of firing and getting acquisition which is going to be easy with three rate of fire right three rate of fire is pretty easy i'm going to reduce that uh, let's go up to 130. Okay, all those units are down the bottom of the board. So rate of fire three, it's easy to get acquisition. It's not a big deal. You pretty much get it in one turn. So, but he he will he will entrench. Uh, sniper activation. I'm not sure you get a sniper activation on an entrenchment roll. Again, you can check that. I think we screwed the pooch on that. Um, because it's like an entrench entrenching dice roll. It's not really a entrenching task check. It's an entrenching dice roll. Check that for us. Um, it does pin one of my guys. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Santos is moving to the right because Kiff cannot. My other guys are just approaching up here. We're getting the victory locations initially. And we're just setting up for him to come on. And hopefully getting, again, my mortar, the Japanese mortar there. Two hex range to maintain the two rate of fire. Uh, I think we could see that on the back side. Nope. I think it might be on the counter. It might be on the counter on the. Oh, yeah. Inf info. Uh, not hip. Info. There we go. Uh, rate of fire one. Uh, smoke seven. He actually has smoke seven. HE range of uh, less than three is rate of fire one. So he'll have a rate of fire one. But anyway, uh, info is really good to have. Okay, let's try there. Hopefully we won't see any bouncing balls. I move my guys up there. Pin guy obviously can't move. We advance fire. I think we advance fire to a blank location because I think he possibly might have another hidden unit. Uh, just for, the, for, for whatever reason. My guys advance. We move around. Keep moving around. Uh... I advance into there, and there's his hidden unit. That's what I wanted to avoid. We find his hidden unit after I advance into close combat. I might be in a world of hurt here. I roll a four, he rolls a three. I am ambushed. I think at that point, he chooses to withdraw from the ambush. Um, I think he had the option of hand-to-hand, -hand, which let's say if that's a half squad, because there's another half squad on the other side. That would have been a one to three again we pop up our chart that would have been a one to three which is one to four minus two uh wait minus one for ambush my i think it was second line unit so he probably needed a five for a kill so probably a good decision for him because his turn's coming up um uh that's a hard choice to make because if he stays there he's going to be eliminated i mean that's just a simple fact we've got a uh, six minus two here we got a 12 minus one there or uh, 12 even 
we've got lots of firepower. So for him ret retreating from there, that's a command decision. Um, and he goes into a hut. He goes into victory location. So whatever. Um, could he have stayed there and tried to kill me? Ah, you could argue that. I mean, you got all your forces coming up here. They're coming up here on the bottom, right? They're coming up here on the bottom. You can argue that you could probably take that shot for five, even if six will CR him. And if you're a half squad, you go half squad to half squad. At this point, I think you could trade squad for squad and you'd be okay. But again, the Japanese, they have a tendency to stripe. And you have a tendency to lose your firepower pretty quickly, especially in facing. Um, oh, we got a hero somewhere. Cummings popped out of here somewhere with the snake eyes or some self-rally or something. But anyway, we popped a hero. No clue where that guy came from, but you saw that. But um, um, it'll be tough because I have complete control of the village. And I think we deleted all the stuff. Uh, I think rain happens. I think rain happens now. So you can, you can like do rain. I wish it was like a little lighter, darker than this. This is a little lighter. Um, so that's rain. That, that signifies rain in, um, in, um, PTO or anything dark. This is night. This is cool. So a night, night on Vazel, badass. I really haven't played it night on Vazel, but you have this effect. Uh, so really awesome, really cool. Makes it really easy to see, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But the rain doesn't do anything to the blaze. Uh, I'm really not a big fan of kind of just whiting it out, so I just leave it. That's why we move the rain plus one right on the middle of the board to remind us that the rain is occurring. And that's what the little... And we're just putting it all over the place. See that? I put it up here, put it down here, and this is a bad, it's a bad situation. Let me move that over there. So that way we could see it easier and remind us that we need to add one to the shots. Not a bad idea. Uh, again, another advantage you can have with um, Vazel and something you can actually do with your boards if you have um, the Plexi on it. I don't use Plexi. I don't play a lot of face-to-face, -face, so uh, I'm not really keen on certain things like that. So anyway, move all my units up. He advances. I think he assault moves guys up. I just take a lot. This is where it's, where it's just firepower. He just has to withstand firepower. Oh, uh, there's a medium machine gun. Just mount a mortar. He's just moving guys up as he can. And there's, again, the marsh. You can look at this. Something I didn't even see. This is marsh. This is terrible. He, he can't move here. His units are split in half by this side and on that side. So this there's only a two hex advancement that you can go up through here. And these marshes are just terrible too to move into. So just bad. So this again, these are just fire attacks. Nothing special. I'm just blasting them. I mean, nothing. I mean, this essentially now it's just going to be a wall hitting a wall. Uda uh, on the left hand side tries to advance up. Again, I think we made the error on the um, striping. So Cummings and his uh, buddy prep fire prep 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 prep. We blast units here. Uh, only pin them. Only pin them. Uh, stripe one guy. Uh, apparently, uh, we striped him for some reason. Kiff moves over central. Now, Kiff is moving central here. Say, Stu, I thought you were going to use Kiff on the left hand or the right hand side to kick everyone's ass. Well, he kind of did that. He kind of did that. Now he's moving centralized. So, in case I get broken units, one, he could he could uh, consolidate firepower. He jumps on this unit here. I op fired him. I op fired that unit because they're going to move Kiff onto him. So now he's going to have a six firepower from him and then three more firepower for the squads moving on top of him. So he will have an eight firepower minus two on some target of his choice. I'm not sure exactly where I, th I think it was going to fire. Maybe down here at this guy because everything else is firing at him. I might as well fire on him too as well. So I think that's what the idea was on that. They defensive final fire. Pop, pop, pop. Good roll. Uh, we see today's average of dice rolls on the left-hand side. Then we start the next log. Uh, lots of bad morale checks for John. Lots of bad morale checks over here. Uh, most of his stack just disintegrates when I get some, some. Uh, there's my task at the beginning, some sevens and fours and fives and just nastiness happens. So his units kind of get beat up on the left-hand side. Looks grim for him on that side. 
Stu moves over. Again, Kiff moves over to consolidate defense. Because we only need really need one side. We only need like six six huts. And I think we have seven or eight. I think there's one right up here that we moved into that we didn't mark. So uh, bear with me on that one. So he does get punched in the face. Like again, unfortunately, I think we step reduced those guys a little too early. Uh, but then again, he would have just been step reduced at this point in time. He does move forward, recover, uh, victory location. Not bad. He moves his other forces up here. Good force on that right-hand side. Uh, he's going to human wave. Oda and the one two sixes will human wave this bad boy here. Conscripts human waving nasty. But he does have the advantage of being right next to him. So he gets to jump. I don't know if you can bonsai right next to him. Anyway, he did. So I think he's going to jump directly into uh, Iota. It's going to move into the, the into the kunai. Oh no, Iota just bonsai's himself. So we get the bonsai wave. He blasts. He blasts. And this is funny as hell. <coughs> We're still setting up the human wave thing. It's just like a, it's like a geometry lesson. It's incredible. He first fires support weapons. Boom, residual. He, he cowers, so he's done. Cowers, bad. Next unit, fires to hit. That's a miss, I believe, because all the hindrances. First fire, 12, cowers his ass. These Americans are shitting in their in their rainy, wet kunai huts. They didn't see Iota coming out with bloody bullets, blood all over him. He's running at him with his katana, his wakasashi. And these three conscript guys right next to him. So it's like the three stooges. Anyway, these three stooges, everybody's firing. Pow, 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 pow. Ten, guess what? Third cower in a row. No subsequent first fire from these guys at all. So it's like, shit, what the hell am I doing now? So the conscript does get to him. Jumps into close combat. What does he have to do? He must Final protective fire because he's first fired. He doesn't subsequent first fire. He must final protective fire because he cowered earlier, which sucks. Uh, and actually, there's two squads went in there, or two half squads went in there. So he's got a FPF with a seven. I think I roll a three, and I think I blast the living crap out of this guy. Uh, yeah, I roll. Uh, no, that was. I think. Uh, wow. I'm not sure what those rules were. But anyway, they survived. Regardless, they survived. Kaneko, Kaneko down below, 10-0, coming around. He's flanking hard. And what I roll? A three. I think that kills him. Somebody shoots him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right here. Santo shoots him 12 firepower. One, two, three, four, five, six. 12 minus three. I think we have a hindrance, so 12 minus two. And I roll, what did I roll? You tell me, I roll a three, 12 minus two. Oh, I think it was a 1K. And look what he rolled. Three, three, six. Actually, three, three. He had three squads. Uh, maybe he had only two squads with him. Maybe that was a triple Yahtzee or some shit like that. Anyway, it was it was bad. He gets into close combat. Stu's up here to all these guys. All these guys are final fired, so I, I can't do anything else. I just have to wait the outcome of the close combat. Hand to hand close combat. I roll six. He rolls a nine. Um, I'm not sure what, what what's going on in there. We'll check that out. I'm removing all that crap. I think I miss. Or maybe somebody shoots at me in, in the uh, in the fire phase. That's probably what that is. And then he just his human wave flips over because it's the end of the human wave. Actually, his ends because he can only go three movement factors worth, and two of them of his three is going to the kunai. And so he just uh, he just uh, stumbles forward into the kunai, falls down, and he can't go any further. So my boys, the other boys, go into close combat, and. Um, He could advance into close combat. This is good. This is good of what John did. 
Why does he advance into close combat? He's lax. He's going to get that negative modifier. He's screwing himself. Say, no, he's not, Stu. Actually, with the plus two leadership modifier, he might be. But the Americans are considered CX in close combat, so he's going to get a plus one modifier as well. And it increases his firepower by a little bit. So take that little chance. Um, take that little chance. Uh, bad dice rolls, but he's in a world of hurt. He's just in a world of hurt right now. And uh, he's got to make something happen. So these guys advance forward close combat. And they get annihilated uh, for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, where's Udo? Why did Udo show up over here? Uh, that must be a, that must be an error. So sorry about that. Now maybe Udo advanced backwards. Maybe that's what the deal was. Again, the log file is so old. Sometimes it screws up this data. Sometimes for whatever reason. All these guys prep fire on the left hand side. Uh, looks like no effects. These guys are just moving over just to defend and consolidate the huts. I'm just being safe because he does have a strong force over there. If I move up in the open. And he blasts me. I mean, he's got mediums. He's got machine guns all over the place. Rates of fire. You never know when those things are going to go into terror. Is my position strong? Yeah, it's pretty strong. But you never know. When they all cower in a shot and he gets into close combat, it's bad. Step reduces crew. Not a problem. Uh, mortars mouthed. Guys are just moving up. Consolidating. Here's my giant wave of firepower. And my hero to guide it. And, um... They're going to human wave again, straight forward. Uh, Uda jumps him. The, the other guy jumps on the left-hand side. They all fire, fire, fire. The conscript keeps moving. Because we, we what we do is we name the broken units. He named the broken units down the road. Because you name the broken units down the road, you can jump. You can go towards that unit, right? So since this, you say, screw it, Stu, you guys screwed that up. No, if you're adjacent to an enemy and he's in like your frontal thing, you may jump into his location, even though you declared the bonsai or human wave over here, right? He's not going to, he's not going to make it. Well, he might make it actually two, four, six, eight. He's not going to make it. He doesn't have to make it. He just has to be within eight hexes. So he's going to run here. The leader runs here to pin him down. And maybe this guy can move. Oh, he's broken. Um, so he's going to go there, try and jump in close combat because these guys are going to first fire and you never know one to six. You know, you never, never know. Um, uh, so he assault moves over. I think he's just at this point, it's, it's bad. Let me reduce the stacks. Got 8,000 counters in it. Uh, let me move over a little bit. I'm just blah. He essentially has three squads left, so it's it's not good. Morale check twelve. He just completely gets a blah obliterated from that. Um, I think that's our. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, that's the random selection for a sniper. Uh, one guy gets popped. A close combat. Look what happens, baby. Look what happens. He rolls a snakes. No close, no no ambush, in, no ambush in, in uh human wave if he's already in the location. He rolls the snakes right in the beginning. He kills him and he gets out. He Auda, seven plus two wounded leader kills a full six six seven in close combat, hand to hand close combat. Look at the chart, read the chart, learn the chart, love the chart. One to six, four, and he might get a minus one for a leader. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, regardless, he rolled the snake eyes. He's just dead. He's just he's just dead. And you get to uh, that's infiltration. Then you may withdraw from close combat. He destroys a full squad. One single man counter destroys a full squad after taking a twelve shot to the face. Who does a badass? And then he just simply just leaves. He just went in there, kicked twelve guys' ass, and just left. You know he's got he's got got a rally over here. He needs every single guy up that he can. Those guys move forward. That's all they really can do. Unfortunately, they're in open ground. And I think I just kind of blast them. And um, they step reduce and good stuff like that. Not really a lot you can do. And uh, that was his last unit for all intents and purposes. So, uh, yeah, we just prepped the living daylights out of him. Let's see. We'll just go to the end of the, end of the turn. 
They just rot back. And then we just talked about the location. So, um, so that was actually a, a pretty fun game, to be honest with you, simply because the A, the Japanese theater, it's tight. We have hidden Japs. And then I got that free lucky shot, just shooting in the, just ripping down through the kunai. I got this 9-0 leader, I believe, up and out. And I think he got pinned, or you can remember what he got there. Uh, dig a foxhole in the mud. That's kind of fun. It's really centralized. Again, he could fire. He could fire in these locations here with his mortar. Plus one hindrance. Don't really care. Plus one hindrance because of the rain. Don't really care. Um, once you have acquisition on key locations, you just keep pounding them. And uh, I got the locations early. I squashed him early, and I got lucky on some of my rolls. A lot of good low rolls early, which ripped him and reduced him, uh, which made it difficult. Made it very difficult. And uh, I think we made it, again, we made the error down here, I think, on the Mirage checks for the leader. You can check that up. Check that on me. But I think we made a mistake on when the leader, like, wounds or breaks or something. He doesn't really break. He just wounds. But I somehow I don't think the Japanese take leader loss from Mirage checks. I just have that like somewhere in my ASL mind. But anyway, last of the strength, uh, seven turns, pretty quick scenario. Uh, to be honest with you, in terms of the the PTO, not a lot of work, quonky, wonky terrain. Um, it's just the ambush you have to get used to. A little bit of hand to hand combat. Uh, Americans do have a lot of firepower. You got, I think you got a. I don't know what you have to do here in the Japanese, but um, you got to do your best. And uh, I'm not sure what happened. But, I mean, I pretty much still had most of my troops. I have a lot of half squads popping around. Uh, I think Kif, Kif got snipered, I think. He must have gotten snipered. So, um, end of turn. Fun game. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this one, so since we played this one. Uh, I thank John for the game. Um, and uh, it was exciting. Uh, even, I really liked the Uda going in there, taking that shot. Again, a four is not bad for even a CR and a one to six roll. People hand to hand is dangerous, and he was smart enough to know and take that opportunity. It's a it's a possible free kill, so um, he he did that, and the way he did his his uh, human wave, which allowed him to jump to the side instead of just human waving right there, so his conscript couldn't go up there. His conscript made it next to him, which caused those guys a DM, um, and possibly he could advance in there. I think he did advance in there and got killed or ah, something like that. No, I rattled away. I rattled away in the route phase, and then he advanced, or he got shot. But fun game. Uh, the scenario special rules, again, write your notes down. Keep your notes ready, because you will forget them. And um, I hope you enjoyed this one as much as we did playing it. And thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Americans pulled out another victory. I think there's slight American advantage in this particular scenario. I think if they could get on top of the Japanese, smash them before the reinforcements come. It makes it very difficult for the Japanese to win the game, I believe. But I got some lucky shots, as we all do. And um, But it was fun. Uh, I think the approach was fun. Uh, the scenario special rules add a lot of flavor to it and actually came into play as Kiff was throwing up and he, he couldn't move and he was TI for one turn. So that was kind of cool. It took him out. Actually... At a very key spot where the Japanese were right on the verge of entering the village. I could have reacted to his movement. And it could have made a difference in the game. Um, luckily, my force was pretty much uh, intact from the initial attack of the village. Um, I got lucky pulling some guys off a hidden spot. Give me your thoughts. Did you guys play this one? How did it turn out for you? Did you get your butts kicked? Did the, were the Japanese you know, mangled on one side of the huts and they retreated... From the other huts and gave the americans those did you get swamped by you know ambushes throw it down there if you guys have played it before you know let's let's just hear what's going on here or if you've got a video of it link it link the video down below and we'll see what's going on but anyway thanks for watching thanks for supporting the channel and we'll catch you on the next one thanks a lot